Hey everybody, it's Rich and Alex here with this week's fishing report. So we are going to get things started off. It's December, so Christmas is right around the corner. Uh, be sure to stop by and check out some of the stuff we've got in store. We've got some gift ideas for you guys. We've been posting about some gift ideas. If you're looking for anything for that fisherman in your family and you're not sure what to get, give us a call or stop in. Um, so let's get to the fishing report. Um, Pickerel. Pickerel. Yeah, we're going to cover pickerel. We're going to cover a little bit of striped bass. We're going to cover a little bit of yellow perch. perch. And so let's start with pickerel. Yep. This time of the year is a great time to fish for them. We're sticking in the rivers, mm -hmm. right? Um, we'll see creeks, rivers all around this area. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. So we got a couple of different lures we're going to talk about. Um, I'll talk about some of the lures. We'll talk about some of the mm -hmm. tactics that go on. So, of course, our, our big popular ones, the ones we make in-house, which work really well. We I mean, we've actually designed these to work for our water. So it's the inline spinner. That spinner is going to sit in front of it, and that blade's going to spin around. You got a little paddle tail on the back there. We put a couple different colors on there that we make up. Um, pretty decent size hook. Um, if you want to make your own, these are the hooks that we use, and these are some of the baits that we use. So the Gambler, um, these are the... Uh, which ones are these, Alex? I think they're the easy fives. No, no, they're just, yep. Yep, the little easies. Little easies, yeah. Um, colors, we do like the... Uh, Natural kind of, you know, color there, and then a little bit darker there. Yeah, that, that Plum Rita, mm -hmm. and then, you know, like your, your white, uh, brighter colors, and then again, your natural colors would work really well for that. Um, simple, easy rigging mm -hmm. on these. Just got the screw hook in the in the front of the hook. You just screw them in the nose, rig them weedless, so you can throw them into the shorelines. Yep. I get a call on rocks and pilings. Underneath and stuff the like pilings, that. Yep, yeah, that works absolutely. pretty good. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, those things have been working actually pretty good for myself yeah. and most of the people around here. Yeah. Uh, just fishing those, like you mentioned, around the shoreline, uh, underneath piers. It's mm -hmm. been a good tactic to actually pitch those underneath. Yep. Let them sink slowly, and then as soon as you pick up the retrieve, they'll hit it. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of these areas have been actually really good for pickerel right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is nice size fish, too. Oh, yeah. It seems to be one of those uh, years where the population for tidal pickerel has come back up, especially in the Severn, Magathy, and the Patapsco have mm -hmm. been, like, the three main areas where... Uh, most people, and even myself, have been going out there and catching a lot of fish and good sized fish. Nice. I mean, well, I've seen plenty of uh, citation size, which is 24 inches and above, to mm -hmm. like 25, 26 inch fish uh, in the past few weeks. So that's been actually amazing this year. Nice. Very cool. Well, another of our in-store made um, setup is the, the pickerel pounder. Mm -hmm. So we got a float with a leader. Um, you can adjust the float so that you can have it for different depths of water. And then right on top of that hook, we've got this little blade that'll kind of spin around. And we're loading this up with a minnow. Oh, yeah. So you got a little minnow swimming down mm -hmm. there, keeping them alive. And, and uh, that, that's going to yeah. be a dinner bell ringing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Especially when the fishing's a little bit tougher with the low tide, uh, like it seems to be right now, where they kind of slow down. That's been the ticket. Yeah. Just anchor up somewhere, or if you're in the, on a pier, just cast them out and let them sit there, and it works pretty well. Yeah, so grab a half point of minutes, a mm -hmm. couple of these rigs, you'll be good to go. I've always been a big fan of throwing <clears throat> metals for these guys. They do have a little bit of teeth yep. to them. So old school, I like using the uh, the Johnson Silver Minnow. Oh, that's a good lure there. It's a nice Classic. lure. The key to, 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 to using this lure is a, a slow to moderate retrieve. Mm -hmm. You don't want to run too fast with this because it'll spin. We don't right. want it to spin. We want it to wobble. Right. We want it to move back and forth through the water like this. It does have a weed guard on mm -hmm. it. So again, throwing around those pilings and stuff, it'll work out really well. I like to tip them. I'll either put uh, well, one of those. Oh, that's a secret there. Yeah, this is the good <laughs> stuff. So I'll either put one of these bust them uh, baits, the little nail tail baits on there, um, or just a simple little twister tail. Uh, and you just pierce it through the hook and let, let the body hang off, let the tail hang off. And as you're doing that slow retrieval, you get that really nice waddle in the water. Oh, yeah. You get the tail in the back. Um, tails are nothing to re-rig. Um, there's plenty in the bag. So and again, one cool thing with fish. that that I like about it is it actually you can slowly jig it. Yeah. Uh, that if, like that fall, yep. that wobble on the fall yep. really gets them going. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you're more inclined to do a more steady retrieve, an Aglia from MEPS is always a good one. Um, a size three would do fine. We've got gold. We have silver as well. Depends on your tip, mm -hmm. your, your preference on the color of the water. Um, and then, of course, a Rapala. A Rapala would work great. That's a spinning trick. It's amazing. Yeah, these things work really, really well. Um, you know, nice, slow, steady retrieve. You're getting some action out mm -hmm. of both of these. Um, and these are nice, too, because they're not plastic. So they're right. going to hold up well with those toothy fish, fish after fish. A lot of people out fishing the CCA tournament. Yeah. So you're going to have some gonna have some company out on the water. But it's right. nice to have a bait catching all those fish over and over. You don't have to keep changing baits out. Um, so let's switch gears. Let's let's stay in the river. Yeah. Let's talk about perch. perch. So yellow perch. yellow perch, 
starting to see some more. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a favorite for a lot of people around here. It's nice in the wintertime. We, we usually target them in the mm -hmm. wintertime. So what are you typically using for yellow perch? So you're going to bycatch them too by pickerel fishing. Yeah. But yeah, so this is, if I'm artificial fishing around this three main rivers that we just mentioned, the, you know, Severn, Tapsco, and the Magathy, I like to throw this little guy, and this is another Propeller product, and this is our ultralight crankbait. Uh, especially if we were throwing it with uh, an ultralight rod, you know, your four to six pound mono, lighter braid. And really what you do is just like a little bass crankbait. You throw it out, reel it in, but when you stop it, it'll actually float up. So I like to throw this out there in about, you know, four to six foot of water, cast it along pilings and stuff, and just reel it in nice and slow, and then give it a couple stops and let it rain, you know, come up and they'll hit that. Nice. I mean, you'll catch a mixed bag of things with that little guy. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my other favorites is this little guy here. Um, when they're really active, and this is a, another um, addiction baits, mm -hmm. um, you know, local product. And this is our small finesse chatter bait here. Uh, when they're really aggressive, you throw that out there and you'll catch, you know, multiple fish in one spot. I think that vibration really gets them going mm -hmm. when they're pretty active. But... Those are like my two little favorite artificials there for them. Yeah, chatter baits have become really popular with <clears throat> snakehead. They've been they've been popular in the bass fishing oh, world yeah. for a long time. Um, so it's it just has a really unique vibration mm -hmm. to them. And now there's all all different sizes for all, all different kinds. species. Yep. Yeah, they work really well. So let's change gears. Let's let's fire the motor up, head out into the bay. Oh, so yeah. striped bass fishing is still going on. It's catch and release in the bay right now. Um, still open in the Potomac, but mm -hmm. in the Chesapeake Bay, if you are fishing, um, colder months, the, people are out there doing it. The bigger fish are starting to come back in. No secret, the power plants where your mm -hmm. warm water discharges are always a popular one. We're going to change baits. We're going to go to a little bit bigger BKD, mm -hmm. bust them baits, the Z-Mans you've got here, some larger jig heads. You know, fishing in those rips is faster moving water. Um, one point I want to make is, remember, it's catch and release. So you are allowed to be out there, you are allowed to catch them. Keep the fights short. Uh, keep the fish in the water when you're releasing them. Just, you know, be good stewards of the bay. Um, so, you know, we know people are going to be out there fishing for stripers. It's a good time to be out there for some of those bigger fish. Yeah. You know, in, in, the, in the springtime, we see those bigger fish, but there's a huge crowd of people out there. So you will find less people on the water. You know, be safe. It is cold out there. Like you said, uh, this is the best time to go out there for yeah, those fish. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And if you want to stay closer to home, uh, remember, you don't have to go to deeper water most of the time. Uh, I personally... When I want to go try for some of those bigger fish locally, I'll actually target the Patapsco mm -hmm. and fish some of those uh, small discharge, high yep. water discharges yep. areas in the Patapsco where you're fishing maybe 10 foot of water. Yeah. And uh, you won't get as many fish, but if you do hook in something, they're normally those 40 plus inch fish. Yeah, and like you said, you're you're in shallower water, which would and normally would make mm -hmm. me think, well, let's use lighter baits, smaller right. baits, but we're fishing those rips, we're fishing that mm -hmm. discharge, we're fishing that water coming out so you have that faster current. Right. That's why we're using those heavier baits. It has nothing to do with the bigger fish or the bait or whatever. Right. It's, it's that heavier weight to fight that current. Mm -hmm. Get down to where the fish are. Keep so, them down there, yep. Um, so let's let's change gears again. Let's go into snakehead. So what's going on yeah. with snakehead for the winter? So, wind? you know, this time of the year, especially down in Blackwater, uh, whenever you get a really nice day like we did this past weekend uh, and the water warms up quickly down there since they're just moth flags, you're fishing two foot of water, if that. Uh, get some going. You'll have a window of them feeding, and that's what happened this past weekend. Uh, a couple guys sent in, you know, reports of actual multiple catches of snakeheads on minnows, live minnows, and once again, th those little maps. Yeah. Uh, you just gotta kind of measure uh, your days that you're going out there and wait for like a little, you know, warm water spell and head down there and fish for them. That's probably gonna be your best area to go for snakeheads in the winter since the water will change uh, temperatures pretty uh, drastically with the temperature, the air temperature. When you're fishing anywhere around here, you're really not gonna see many of them since they will be a little bit sluggish because mm -hmm. of the water temperature being a little bit colder up here. But yeah, it seems like this upcoming weekend we have a, not a 60 degree, you know, weather day, but closer to the 50s and mm. might get those fish going yeah yeah mm -hmm. absolutely definitely keep your eye on the weather for those warmer warmer days because yep. it does it does get things fired up mm -hmm. even though it's the middle of the winter so well that about does it for us we yep. appreciate you guys for tuning in uh, we look forward to seeing you next week and remember if you need any uh, advice or help with holiday shopping just let us know we'll help you guys uh find something with a fisherman or a hunter in your family so yep. uh, thank you guys for tuning in thank you alex yep. um mm -hmm. so good luck out there guys have fun have a good one